Hello and welcome to one and all. In today's class, I will explain to you about the welfare definitions of economics. In my previous class, I explained to you about the wealth definition of economics, which was given by Adam Smith and his followers. And basically what the welfare, wealth economists they have propagated according to them, economics is a science of wealth and economics mainly studies about how each and every individual or the entire nation generates and increase their own wealth. Okay, so that was the main subject according to the classical economists like Adam Smith and his followers. And I also mentioned to you about what were all the defects pointed out by the later economists on the wealth definitions of economics. Okay, so some of them like Carlyle and Ruskin, they called economics as a dark and dismal science according to them. Uh, economics should be studying about the uh, activities of an ordinary man instead of an economic man. And Marshall criticized saying that economics should be concerned about the welfare of the human being instead of the wealth of the people or the wealth of the nation. Okay, so having criticized like that, most of the economists pointed out the criticisms and because of that, the wealth definition was discarded towards the end of the 19th century and Marshall's welfare definition became popular, okay? So today I will explain to you about the features of welfare definition given by Marshall, okay? Let me switch over to the whiteboard. Okay, now moving on to the next most important definitions of economic welfare definition. So this defin definition, is given by the neoclassical economists. So the first batch of economists, Adam Smith and his followers, they were considered as the classical economists. I told you that classical, they have all graduated from the classical school of economics. And now uh, the next batch of economists, they are called as the uh, neoclassical economists. And Marshall happened to be one of the founders of the neoclassical econ economics, okay? So uh, these economists, they have given the welfare definition of economics. So the main, the dominant person here is Alfred Marshall. So he published a book named Principles of Economics in the year 1890. So Alfred Marshall, happens to be the Cambridge economist. And uh, for your information, this principles of economics happen to be one of the dominant economics textbook in England over for many years during that period of time. And uh, going by the same thing, all the junior intermediary students, whatever the syllabus prescribed for you is nothing but the excerpts from the principles of economics given by Marshall. This is for your information, okay? So this is, the, he published a book, Principles of Economics in 1890, in which he gave the welfare definition of economics. In other words, according to Marshall and his followers, economics studies about the welfare of the human being rather than the wealth of the human being, okay? So let us see what was the definition given by Marshall, okay? So the definition by Alfred Marshall. So he defined economics as political economy or economics is a study of mankind in the ordinary business of life. It examines that part of individual and social action 
which is most closely connected with the attainment and with the use of material requisites of well being thus it is on the one side sorry thus it is on the one side a study of wealth but on the other side most important side a part of the study of man i know the definition is quite a big and as students of uh, junior intermediary economics you are expected to memorize all these definitions okay at least the main definition if not all the definition at least the main definitions you are expected to memorize okay so now this is the definition given by marshall so based on this definition what uh, what are all the features we can detect from this okay so in order to know the features let me highlight what are all the some of the words which are used by marshall so the first one political economy or economics okay then mankind the next part is ordinary business of life the next part social action then material requisites well being study of man okay so from these words these phrases we can find out what are all the features of welfare definition given by marshall okay so let me explain to you the main features based on this definition and based on whatever the words or phrases which are highlighted okay so features of welfare definition so the first feature as i have highlighted he has mentioned or economics the first part that's what i have highlighted so or economics so this one based on this marshall clearly separated economics from politics so he very clearly mentioned political economy or economics so he dignified the status he clearly separated and elevated the status by identifying separating economics from politics so he clearly separated uh, economics from politics and it is similar to like you know how you are addressing the other sciences like physics chemistry etc like that so he clearly separated economics from politics and gave a separate status to economics as a science like physics chemistry all those other sciences okay so that is the first uh, feature we are finding out okay then other the next thing i asked you to i mean i underlined here is mankind so 
what does this imply economics studies about man or human being okay that the next information we are getting so economics studies about man the next one which i have highlighted is ordinary business of life so what does this phrase imply so this one economic studies about man so economics ordinary business of life implies how am a how a man earns and spends his income that is his business of life so that is nothing but economic activities which i explained to you previously so economic studies about only the economic aspects of man so economic studies about the economic activities of man a man has got so many aspects uh, uh, religious aspect social aspects spiritual aspect psychological aspect so many aspects are there for a man or a woman okay but economics is not concerned with all those other things economics is concerned only with the economic aspects of man that's what the ordinary business of life implies so economic studies about the economic activities of man i think uh, everyone can remember what is the meaning of economic activities that is earning and spending the income so economic studies about how a man earns and spends his income so ordinary business of life that is the next feature okay now the next one which i highlighted is the fourth one is social action so social action uh, this implies economic studies about economic activities of man man is treated as a i mean he is living as a part and parcel of the society that means economics is a social science in other words economics studies about the economic activities of man as a part and parcel of the society meaning what one man's say, uh, economic activities nothing but earning and spending income so one man's income is another man's expenditure and vice versa so whatever the activities done economic activity done by one individual either earning or spending is affecting the others economic activities also in the society isn't it so economic studies about the economic activities of man when man is uh, staying or is living as a part and parcel of the society so in that way economics is a social science okay then the next uh, information which i highlighted is why uh, for what reason uh, the man is indulging in economic activity that is material requisites so is, this is this implies nothing but man is indulging in economic activity man is buying uh, uh, sorry spending and receiving income only to material requisites clearly means to purchase goods okay so economic activities done by man in order to purchase goods and sorry only goods he very clearly mentioned material requisites okay and the next one which i have highlighted is well being so why man is pursuing the material requisites why man is uh, purchasing the goods because in order to promote his or her own welfare to promote his own welfare well being here rep represents welfare there's a highlight of marshall's definition and the last part 
Thus, it is on the one side a study of wealth, and on the other side, the most important side, a part of the study of man. So, in this way, so based on this, Marshall gave primary importance to the study of man, one is secondary importance to wealth, primary importance to the study of man and his welfare only secondary importance to wealth so in this way he dignified uh, economics as a science so you remember like in the previous class by giving more importance to wealth the wealth the uh, the economists who advised economics as a science of wealth they promoted an economic man selfish man so economics is going to study about only the activities of an economic man by giving more importance to wealth. So by deviating from that, so Marshall gave more importance to the study of man and his welfare. So he promoted or dignified the subject economics. Okay, one day, so he gave only secondary importance to wealth. So secondary importance to wealth. So as per this definition, economics uh, as a uh, subject, economics should be more concerned about the welfare of the human beings. Wealth is only a way or a mean in which to promote his or her own welfare. So in this way, Marshall's definition is considered to be superior to the wealth economists, the wealth definitions. And that's why uh, towards the end of the 19th century, the wealth definition was discarded and Marshall's welfare definition or whoever the followers of welfare definition, it became popular. There are other followers of welfare definition also, like for example, the followers of welfare definition. The other economists who also opine that economics should be a science of welfare rather than the science of wealth. One noted economist was A.C. Pigou. Sorry, A.C. Pigou, for your information, he was the student of Marshall, considered to be one of the best students of Marshall. Okay, so A.C. Pigou, so he also mentioned that the range of our inquiry becomes restricted to that part of social welfare. Again, he mentioned very clearly social welfare that can be brought directly or indirectly into relation with the measuring rod of money. So here this implies one is basically range of our inquiry becomes restricted to that part of social uh, welfare. So our inquiry, whatever we are going, economics as a subject, is going to deal only with the social welfare, the welfare of the people. The same thing, like welfare of the people who are living as a part and parcel of the society. The next part, directly or indirectly into relation with measuring rod of money means all the economic activities that are performed by the human beings that can be measured with the help of money. That is nothing but when we are paying the price for whatever the commodities which we are purchasing, isn't it? So uh, he very clearly mentioned that whatever the uh, goods that are purchased by the people that, that can be recorded, that can be measured in terms of money. So only those activities are included in the subject matter of economics and why those goods are purchased, again, in order to promote the social welfare. Or in other words, there are some uh, uh, something called as barter system. So in the barter system, the goods are exchanged for goods. 
so that they the party system that exchange is not under the measuring rod of money there is no money involved in the barter system so those kind of transactions are not beyond the purview of study of economics so that's why we very clearly mention that can be brought directly or indirectly into relation with the measuring rod of money all the transactions that are happening by exchanging money so that for the social welfare so that is the enquiry of economics economics is that particular subject economics is the one that deals with that okay so like that he also in other words he also uh, what is a popularize the the welfare aspect of economics so apart from that there are other economists like edwin cannon stigler erving fisher even our own amartya sen so they are all the uh, welfare economists okay so based on because of this i think everyone can understand the superiority of welfare definition over wealth definition but even welfare definition is not without any criticism the later economists who arrived so they pointed out what are all the criticisms of welfare definition also which the criticism which i will explain to you in the next class okay so hope uh, you are able to everyone is able to understand the features of welfare definition okay if you find this video useful please like subscribe and please share with your friends who were in need of some extra classes in economics okay so until my next video bye bye take care